Hi guys, welcome to my coffee show. My name is Jack and today we have a big one. We are starting this new year, a happy new year by the way. We're starting with the big unboxing. That's the DF83V, the newest edition of the DF83 grinders. Lots of interesting stuff inside this grinder. We're going to explore all of that. Big thank you to Joe from Espresso Outlet for sending us this unit. I'm going to put his links in the description. If you could do me a big favor, just click on them, check what he has in all Offer. You can pre-order this grinder, I think it's on a, like a special introduction offer. I don't remember the last time I was so excited about the new grinder. I think it was with my Cafetech Flat Max 2. If you think about DF grinders, I mean they started what? A few years ago with DF64. Good grinder! and then uh, they improved so much so this should be the flagship strong engine variable rpms and few other things well let's let's do it let's unbox it i think that's the best angle i can give you in my small kitchen so as you can see it's well protected and here we have it let's start with the accessories we've got that bit here at the moment i have no idea what it is but i'm sure it's very important well it looks like a shoot or something then we've got a blower with the wooden cup and this one looks pretty much identical to the one from the f64 gen 2 that's the dosing cup the grinder comes with at first i thought it looks worse than the one from the f64 gen 2 but this this one has a magnet on the back so uh, it will be magnetically attached to the body of the grinder and the size well it goes all the way to the porta filters for some it might be an issue not for myself because i still use that collar so i like to dose like so there is an allen key i found it somewhere i guess it's from the machine as well we get the brush what's inside here wow have a look at this beauty oh my goodness it looks like those are the brew bears if those bears are half as good as they look like that's already a winner you can detach that bit as you can see there is the anti-popcorning thing here exactly the same as with df64 gen 2 say hello to my little friend uh, i always wanted to say that yeah I, I know i sound more like a borat than a tony montana so what do you think about the look of this grinder to me it looks great I, I like this new design it's slightly longer yes but especially when you look at it from the front it looks very sleek some people mention that it looks like a train to me at the beginning it looked more like a rocket launcher but i have to say it fits perfectly into my setup the look is one thing but how it performs it's even more important so what we're going to do i will show you the workflow we will grind some coffee we will pull espresso i will talk about the flavor notes and then i will talk about the things that i really love about this grinder and i will also mention a few things that possibly could be improved the grinder itself is not that big but it is long difficult to find a good angle to show you everything to change the settings you have that wheel at the front on the side you have those two uh, switches the bigger one it's like a main on and off switch and the smaller one we will be using for grinding on the other side you can see the wheel to change the rpm you just rotate it and it changes the settings by 100 if you like to experiment with your coffee if you like to see how different rpms are changing the flow of espresso flow of your pour over and taste possibly then you will have lots of fun with that because of that very wide range of settings i will turn it on without any coffee first just for you to hear the noise it makes so you see it starts slowly and then builds up the speed according to the settings that you choose and it is very quiet there is pretty much no vibration now i will put 18 grams of beans in so you have that catching cup but you still need some sort of dosing cup so i use the one from my cafe tech grinders so top speed i like to use hot start that's what i would recommend and then i drop it in And it took three seconds guys three seconds to grind for espresso if i check the retention now it will be about 0 0.3 0 0.4 if i use the blower it's dead on 18 grams and i have to say the noise for such a powerful grinder it's it's, it's relatively quiet and it's just three seconds three seconds let's see what will happen if you grind the same coffee on the same settings but at 300 rpm the grinder is on you can barely hear anything 
It took 20 seconds, about the same as my cafete grinder at 200 RPMs. How RPMs are changing flow of coffee and taste of coffee, that deserves another video. So today I will be using at 1600 RPMs. Let's open the grinder, so it should be relatively easy. That's how the cover looks like. What's that? Oh. I dropped that pin and I'm not sure what that pin is for. It will fit in here and then it will fit into that groove at the bottom of the grinder. So they are Chinese made, they're like a Chinese response to SSP bars. And so far, well, I will talk about the flavor notes when I make a coffee, but so far I really like them. You can see it sits on the springs, so there are like a six springs there. People say there's like a pre-breaker here, I'm not exactly sure. Looks like it holds the zero point so you don't have to worry about re-establishing zero. Let's brew some coffee. I will be using this Cold Town Coffee Roasters. That's the coffee that's been matured in a bourbon barrels. And we have a shot. Extraction looked okay-ish. Remember, this is unseasoned grinder. Cheers. The notes are nicely sharp and there is a separation of notes. I cannot say any note is dominant. You know, sometimes you have a grinders with dominant sour flavors or, or sweet flavors or chocolatey flavors. Here everything is nicely balanced. By the way, if you haven't watched my previous video, well, explain yourself why you haven't, but I, I changed the water distribution plate in my Descent. That changes slightly the flavor notes, the body and a few other things. So it, I cannot really compare this shot with uh, shots that I pulled last week or two weeks ago. But what I've noticed kind of comparing the same coffee with different grinders, this one is slightly lower in terms of body and it offers nice clarity, more towards the modern espresso style of shots. The taste reminds me of taste from a high uniformity Bars. Now, I only had, what, 20 shots, so I cannot say for sure. The grinder is unseasoned, I haven't checked the alignment, but it looks like, at least judging from the shot to shot, it looks like I'm getting an even extraction. Based on that, I would say the alignment cannot be completely off. So if you like balanced shots with a decent level of clarity, this is the grinder for you. Probably not as sharp as I would get from my Cafetec Flat Max 2, we will compare them at some point. And it's definitely not as rounded as the one I would get from a Cafetec MC5. But it is pleasant and it will satisfy almost every coffee drinker, apart from people who like tons of body in the coffee. I haven't tested the brew bars, the time will come for that. Let's talk about the things that I really love about this grinder. Let's talk about the few things that I'm not a fan of and then I will give you my like initial verdict about this grinder. The things that I really love, I like the shape. I mean it's a new design, it looks like 2024 will be the year of grinders with those vertical bars. I like how quiet it is even on the highest RPMs. I love how fast it is. Honestly, I've never, never had a grinder that can grind for espresso in three seconds. Powerful engine, 680 watts. And that's the DC motor, brushless DC motor, which is of the higher quality than the AC motor. Magnetically attached cup. Range for the RPMs, it's huge. And the most important thing is that I really enjoy the taste of the coffee. Now, the things that I don't like about, most of them are just the cosmetic stuff and probably some of that is just me not understanding the grinder. Some viewers mentioned that they don't like the grind indicator, how it looks. For me it works well, but then again I had cafetec grinders with some bloody sticker there. But I've noticed that wheel to change the settings, it is on the tight side. So when you make the changes, and this grinder will probably, you will probably operate for espresso between 10 and 15. The changes you will be making are small and if the dial is hard to rotate, sometimes the the momentum will take you over. Possibly a better grip on that wheel, uh, possibly something made out of rubber or a different texture would help here. The bellow on top, I like the look, I like the design. Now it wobbled a little bit, there is a screw that you can address to attach it properly to the main body of the grinder, but there is a still like a gap in between there, so when you use the blower some of the air will escape. Not a problem, but you have to use the blower a little bit more vigorously than you would on the let's say DF64 Gen 2. 
too. Now talking about the retention, I mentioned it's about a 0 0.3, 0 0.4 without the blower, pretty much zero with the blower. So I would say for the brand new grinder that I haven't used that much, it's not bad. But with those vertical bars, I would expect lower retention without the blower. I'm sure it will improve with the time. Now talking about the workflow, you have to keep in mind that the shoot is very low into the dosing cap. So if you move the dosing cap sideways, you may knock the shoot off. Something you just have to get used to when you use this grinder. I like the electric cable on the back of the grinder, but I would prefer if it was detachable. Possibly because I often take photos, I record videos, I move this grinder away here and there, so it would help me a lot. For most of you it probably is not that important. The last thing I would like to talk about this on and off switch or on and off switches. First of all, and if you know the answer, please let me know in the comments. Why do they have two on and off switches? I mean, I like the design of the big one. I don't like the rubber bits around, but the, the, the switch itself I like. Why we couldn't have just one on and off switch? Why we have to have two? And why we have to have two on and off switches on the side of the grinder next to each other? With time you probably get used to it, but often I press the wrong one when I want to grind or when I want to off the grinder. Some grinders like a Cafetec, it has that main power button on the back of the grinder and then the, the one that you use at the front. Now there is that latency when you turn the main uh, switch off, it takes about 20 seconds for the grinder to power down. Even when you detach it from the mains, when you take the plug off, interesting, peculiar, I have no idea why. And the last bit, not sure if you will be able to notice that, I only noticed it when I woke up one day, there was very quiet around, there is like a buzzing sound coming from that main switch. I have no explanation for that, I don't know why. One more thing and that's probably will go away by the time you get your grinders. My grinder is very fresh out of the factory. I remember my wife came home after I opened it. She was in the different room and she said, what's that smell? There is a strong smell of, of the paint, kind of chemical smell of the paint. I had it for what, four or five days? I can still smell it. Probably in the next few weeks it will go away, but something that I've noticed, something that I have to mention. So guys, if you are still here, definitely click like, subscribe to the channel, click the notification button we will be comparing this grinder with my other grinders I have no idea how other youtubers can do like a proper review of this grinder after owning it for two days probably that's why they are pros and myself I'm not so to give it a justice I have to play with it a bit longer so those are just my initial reactions but if you ask me now Jack should I get this grinder my answer is yes definitely it is a joy to have and I strongly think that this can be considered an end game grinder if you think about DF83, maybe you tried DF83, maybe you even own DF83. Even though they share the same name, the same size of the bears, this is a completely different beast. I only had DF83 version 1, DF83 version 2, a few things that has been improved, like plasma generator. This one, by the way, has a plasma generator as well. But still, this is not the same grind. I mean, RPMs are different. You can choose 1400 and this one if you want, but they are different ranges, different engines different way it starts, different noise, it does not vibrate. The taste of the coffee, it looks like it's cleaner, possibly because of those bursts. So if you are looking for a one and only grinder, if you are looking for end game grinder and you don't want to spend thousands, consider the F83V. If you have any questions about this grinder or any other grinders, let me know in the comments. Plenty more things coming, but for today, thank you very much for watching. My name is Jack, this is my coffee show, and hopefully I will see you soon. Thank you, bye.